Today, I'm going to show a stepping motor in servo mode. This is the coolest thing since beer in a bottle. Um, here's a stepping motor with an encoder on the back. Uh, this is a 200 full step, and this is a 1,000 line incremental encoder, or 4,000 counts per rev. That's kind of the minimum that I'd recommend for servo mode, given a 200 full step stepping motor. And uh, you can see if I turn the shaft, I get some servo behavior out of it. Uh, it's able to close the loop like a servo motor holding position. Now, a stepping motor works really good as a stepping motor because it has a lot of holding torque. If this was a stepping motor, I would not be able to turn the shaft of this motor here. It would have an enormous amount of torque for holding position, which is great for a lot of applications. You don't want any jitter around the position. Um, this actually has the feature of looking at the encoder to make servo corrections, so it only delivers current when we need it, so that's an advantage. Um, and it does servo, um, so it, it, is, it is a very cool feature here. So let me show you how I got to this servo with a stepper. I've got the incremental encoder wired up to a step net. I've got the serial cable kit with a USB to serial adapter. And I've got a 24 volt power supply connected to the drive. Um, the top speed of this thing is not very high uh, because the motor has a very large back EMF constant. And we'll have to figure out how to calculate that because no motor manufacturer tells us what the back EMF constant is of a stepping motor. So this is my Parker CompuMotor OS 21B motor, and it's a stepping motor that's supposed to do 3000 RPM, and I see it's actually a 170 volt DC motor, so that, that's a high voltage winding. My little step net panel right now is only connected with 24 volts. Uh, it can run off of 75 volts. I'm not sure if that's sufficient to go 3,000 RPM. And if I look for the motor specification, again, there's no back EMF constant, so I have to kind of poke around and use some equations that I know. So first I'm going to get the torque constant, so 0.58 Newton meters, divided by the current. We're going to say it's 2.8 amps, 2.8 amps equals 0.207 newton meters per amp. Uh, the, the constant of proportionality, uh, one newton meter per amp equals one volt per radian per second. One volt per radian per second equals 104 volts per kRPM. So I'm going to multiply this by 104. And I get about 21 volts per kRPM calculated and we'll see if that jives with the with the tuning. So I've got CME2 connected over the serial port and we're going to take a look at the basic setup to see what we got here. It's a rotary motor. It's got an incremental encoder on the motor shaft. It's a checkbox for servo mode. I've already set this up and tuned it for open loop so I know that works so I recommend doing that first and then try out the servo mode. I'm going to use position mode and Maybe this is a can open application. So we start with the motor data. I've entered all the motor data and the feedback, 1,000 line, 4,000 counts. And again, I can set my micro steps per rev equal to my encoder counts per rev. Um, so we have to think in terms of micro steps. One count equals one micro step. And I've calculated my initial tuning values based on the data and it's given me current loop values for peak and continuous. I could probably double the peak. It's a big motor. It'll handle the heat. It'll fold back to continuous. But in a servo mode, it'll normally run at less than 2.8 amps. I've got maximum speed selected. If I'm trying to keep things smooth and quiet, I'll go for max smoothness, but that will limit my top speed when I get near the back EMF limit. And the calculated current loop tuning values produce a current loop bandwidth of not very much, 100 hertz. I'm going to have to go in and tune the current loop here. We could do auto tuning. That should be sufficient. But if I'm trying to go 1,000 RPM with a 1.8 degree stepping motor, I need 
50 times a second to rotate a current vector, or 50 times per rev to rotate a current vector, times so many revs per second. Uh, 10 revs per second would be 600 RPM. 100 revs per second would be uh, 1,200 RPM. So let's let's shoot for a, a little bit more than a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. So I can apply to the current loop with auto setup checkbox a small signal current loop bandwidth. And I can see there's not sufficient proportional gain. At some point, my current loop gain will be so high that I'll get a little ring or overshoot. So there's a little overshoot there, so I'm going to cut it back down again. So basically, I'm just doubling or cutting in half to find oscillations. And uh, this looks pretty good. There's not a lot of integral, a lot, not a lot of proportional overshoot. And I'm going to guesstimate about 150. We can try like too much integral, and you can see the overshoot there. Um, but from experience, the integral is a lot less than the proportional. I never get the steady state, but it's a stepping motor, so there's a lot of detent that's messing with my tuning. We will, however, check the current loop bandwidth because, again, I said I needed probably about a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth for this. As you can see, while it's tuning, the motor started spinning, so that really interferes with tuning. But um, looks like we're going to hit a kilohertz. This is a Bode plot test that increments by 100 hertz per step and looks for the half power point. 1.8 kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. That should be sufficient. On the V-loop screen, I'm going to make sure... My limits are out of the way. I should be able to get to a kilohertz. I'll put a limit at 3,000 RPM. My gains are low. We'll crank them up. So we'll use the scope in a velocity mode. Reduce the XL and D-cell limits a little bit so I don't jerk it around too much. Uh, I do not have a load attached, so I should be able to do 500 hertz back and forth motion at 300 RPM. So auto setup checkbox, I got a little, little gain going on here for proportional. Okay, too much gain, I'm going to cut it in half, oscillations go away, integral term, uh, this should be a little too much integral term. Oh, that looks pretty good, we'll leave that alone. Okay, we're going to do some position moves here. Uh, I'm going to do 4,000 counts times 10, 40,000 40, counts per rev. That's 10 revs. Um, we're doing a trajectory of 1,000 RPM. I got the default XL and D cell. And as you can see, the, the following error did not grow too large, a little bit while XL and D cell. So maybe 40 counts, plus or minus 30 counts. So that, that looks nice. And we, we can see the motor spin and, and hear the servo. It's much quieter than a stepping motor. But I'm going to investigate the point at which we're going to have some problems. So we'll look at event status warning, voltage limited. And we'll crank up the speed a little bit here and see if we can start bumping in to the voltage limit warning. Yeah, we can see constant voltage limit warning there. So 1,000 RPM is right on the edge of bumping into, yeah, there we go. During the XL, using the most current and the most voltage, we get a little bump into that. So we'll investigate the uh, voltage limit warning and see how big of a problem that is. Right now, the following error is not exponentially growing, so that seems to be okay. However, I like to trace the voltage bus and the voltage terminal servo or voltage stepper and voltage terminal servo. These are the two voltage vectors that we use to control the current vector. And we can see that while we are voltage limiting, the terminal voltage is getting close to the bus voltage. But the addition of the stepper voltage, these are the two Q and D vectors which add up to make the full voltage vector, which drive the current vector. The sum of these two vectors must be less than 
whatever my bus voltage is, which appears to be about 26 volts. So around 24, 25 volts plus a little more voltage, I'm going to run into a problem here. So let's see if we can run more into a... There, there we go. So what happened here is the following error, which is in blue, started to exponentially grow sometime after I hit a voltage limit. So at speed, this voltage plus this uh, step, the, the D and the Q voltage together exceeded the bus voltage, and that was unable to commutate the motor properly, and the following error grew. So there's a little bit of margin in 1,000 RPM. Uh, I have to clear the fault, the following error fault, to be able to make this go again. But we'll test out. So we have, we're bumping into the voltage limit warning. That's okay. It's just a warning. We're able to run without hitting a constant voltage limit. The following error is not growing. And the sum of the voltages look very close. But 1,000 RPM should be doable unless the load's extremely large or there's more friction in the system. At that time, we should try to increase the power supply voltage. Again, I've got about a 26-volt power supply, and you could hook up a 48-volt or a 75-volt power supply. And again, this motor is designed for 170 volts, so it's designed to run on 120 volts AC rectified without too much droop. So what I forgot to mention is that we have to phase the motor. So phasing the motor means rotating it in the direction you want to be positive, letting it do its micro-stepping to see that when we go forward, counts go up, and this thing will confirm that we're able to commutate the motor. And the test here determines the counts per rev and the number of poles, and we have to monitor the motor to make sure it makes one rev and as we can see the motor is making one rev here so that's good so yes the motor turned one time confirm the counts and the pole count and then of course with an encoder we do a algorithmic phasing on initialization which is fine it delivers enough torque to do that to hold position uh, we can also look at the manual phasing screen. Um, this is using 10% of the continuous current. Uh, if I monitor the, the encoder position, I can set it to zero. Uh, let's start at the, the zero position here. Set zero. Rotate forward. Uh, if I wanted to count it out, I'd rotate it 50 times. So after 50 revs, they get one full rev, 4,000 counts, everything's confirmed. Uh, you can do phase initialization from the manual phase screen. And uh, on power up or reset, we need to have the algorithmic phasing kick in. With a CAN device, you have to wait for it to power up, and the CAN master has to enable it. So to simulate this, we can enable the drive. Bam! Phase initialization is done, so you need to give it some time to run the phase init algorithm. If you need to send a command down to the drive, you can over can open to make it phase init again. Um, but if there is a problem, really you got to make sure your cabling grounding shield is in, shielding is good, and it's usually the encoder shield that doesn't find a path to earth. So looking at the data sheet, we can see. The encoder A, A not B, B not differentially twisted pairs transmitting to the encoder receiver. The shield finds a path to pin one frame ground, and the frame, of course, is connected to earth. Uh, the power supply connects to earth. The signal board finds a path. Everything finds a good path to earth, and in particular, to prevent count drift on your encoder, you've got to make sure the shields are connected properly. Um, and here's a, a, a good diagram of some proper shielding for the cable. So uh, I like to look at the index and make sure the count is 4,000 counts per each rev. Um, that's a good way to do a position capture. 
uh, to verify that the encoder does not drift. Thank you.